backpack. Um, it's how many uploads and downloads have there been to eBackpack. This is total files sent or downloaded from eBackpack. This is actually since the beginning of last year. The numbers we get are accumulating, so we have based on, right? That's how we do that. We changed our minds like two or three times. But the numbers we have are from the beginning of the use of eBackpack. So this is the correct answer. One point three million. That's a bad thing about it. I will say it a little. This is probably closer to just since August. Actually, all of our. That's what I was answering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Between when we got the report in April, which was when, end of April, is when we got the last report that we pulled down that he sent us. Uh, between that time and, and the one he sent us on November last week, um, almost all the numbers had doubled. Um, so you're talking about May and then this semester, uh, the number of files that were uploaded down. So really, just in this first semester, we've almost doubled what we did last year alone um, for the entire year. So it is getting used quite a bit. And so the next question then is, what is that saving us um, per week on average? Um, <laughs> Trying to make some answer. If it's this, <laughs> we, need, we need to talk about some other things. Yeah, per week. Science iBooks, which is in a, a, we knew that was coming up as we, we helped the department adopt that. That's three textbooks biology, uh, physical science, and environmental science are the three uh, classes that went all digital with their textbooks. Chemistry, sorry, four. Uh, and chemistry as well. Um, anatomy and physical, or uh, astronomy and physics would be the three that didn't get an actual book. I know the physics classes are using a lot of digital resources in regards to just using their old book. Um, and so that was a big step. That was a big savings for the school district uh, in those books that we ordered. But we haven't had a lot of complaints or frustrations with those books. It's been very seamless, the way teachers have used them and the way students use them. Um, they're downloaded onto the iPad, so there's not a, I get home, don't have internet, so I can't see the book. It, it is all right on the device. Um, professional development, uh, Katie Upton uh, is, was in our pilot program. She's been here to speak to you a few times. Um, she is actually in our training the trainer program that we're using for TEC um, to be our representative at the high school. So she's done a number of trainings just in random topics, um, different times of the day, trying to get teachers some additional training. So she's kind of our focus point uh, besides just the two of us uh, trying to do that. Um, and so then we had Summer talk about our orchestra a little bit. Uh, Mr. Silva from the band watched, a, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, Ohio State's using a uh, number of apps for their band, and they have a pretty impressive band. Um, Google that if you haven't seen it. Um, so he came to me and said, I want to look at the apps that they have. And so we bought him uh, both the apps that they use at their school. Um, he's doing some piloting in his uh, band with those apps of uh, designing the marches, and uh, it's pretty fancy. The kids carry that, and they know where they're supposed to be on the field at all points of the song. And um, the music one he's kind of looking at, there's uh, ways that kids can highlight things that they're missing. If they're playing along in the song and keep missing this flat that's in there, they can highlight, they can make changes, and, and those kinds of things that they keep missing within the music. So he's piloting some of that now. He's really wanting to move forward with that next year. Some of those are pricey. Uh, 
English, um, some of you got to go sit in. Uh, I know Dr. Aiko went and sat in uh, some PSAs that they did in the freshman level. Um, they read some books and, and did some studying on different things, and, and the kids created that. They used uh, a number of resources, uh, not just in English. We have that going on in all of our classrooms, but uh, that was one area where we saw the kids had to dress up, dress professionally. It was a full blown presentation. Um, they had members from uh, the administrative teams that went up and watched and evaluated, gave grades that weighted into their grade for the class. So um, an opportunity for those kids to not just create a movie and then turn it in and that was it. They had to actually present the material and, and speak highly of it. So a uh, good opportunity there. Um, science, are, they're trying to adapt. They use what's called interactive notebooks. They were just three ring binders that they did a lot of things in. And they came at the first year of Miss Lawlinger or this year. Uh, came to me and said, what are some ideas? So we threw some things out of them of how they could take that three ring binder and turn it into something electronic. Um, there's some things they can do, some things they were like, ah, oh, paper's still best for some of these activities. So uh, they're trying uh, and doing some uh, amazing things with that. Um, Mr. McNutt's classes did some infomercials for all the academies. So if you walk around the building, you'll see some videos playing that are advertisements uh, for the academies. The kids have to go out and interview, find out information about each academy. They play them in the lunchroom about a week and or so, on PBS. and they're on BBS as well. So the kids created all of that. They had to go and take the pictures and get all the information. And, um, those are broadcasting all over the school now as advertisements basically for what's going on in that academy, uh, which is great for our kids that are freshmen, especially that are looking to where they're going to end up. Um, drama, they're using digital scripts, cutting back on the number of paper copies that they're having to use. Their kids are just walking around with their iPads with the script on it, and, and again, the nice thing about that is the ability not just to read the script, but to highlight, I'm missing this line, I keep messing up here. Um, they can make that personal for them versus the book that they had um, before. Our industrial arts, uh, Mr. Ben John sent us a, a, sent, uh, Renee a statement about the way he's, he's using it. They're actually, when they're taking an engine apart, they're taking pictures. Um, I think of, uh, there's a TV show uh, where they, American Restoration, I think, where they tear apart old things that don't have instruction manuals. They do that all the time, and we're seeing that in our school now. The kids are using their iPads to take pictures so that when they tear it all apart and have it laid out on the table, they have something to refer back to as they're putting it back together the way it was, came apart, the way it's supposed to look. Um, they're also doing, and I didn't quite understand it either. We read through it, and we're like, Good, this is engine speak. So we, <laughs> they're using it to build flowcharts for how an engine uh, works, uh, and they're using that as their presentation tool so they can demonstrate their understanding of how combustion uh, engines function. Our special ed kids are using um, some of the digital portfolio work when they're going out on, on job uh, skills. They're being able to relay that information, not just to the teacher, but also to those who are going and observing the places they're going to work. Um, Deb Max was doing quite a bit with that um, as far as just helping those kids identify the things that they have strengths in and weaknesses in so that they can learn as they go out and into these different areas. And Kim Nichols is doing a lot of things. Their kids are really fun to go watch. <coughs> They just have a great time. They, everything they download is, is fit for their level of learning, um, and they're doing all kinds of stuff on it in their classrooms. We do have a number of teachers. We put general here. We have a number of teachers who are recording their lessons for when they're gone for the sub to play, or when their kids are gone, that they can say, hey, here's the lesson from yesterday. You can go watch it. Um, it's a, a newer thing uh, just because of the technology, trying to figure out how it works, and, and we have some teachers who <coughs> I wouldn't say piling it, they took it on their own to kind of figure out how to work it, and uh, there's a number of apps that allow them to do it, but um, what a resource for students when I'm gone. I have a sub who maybe can't teach my content area. They can just hit play, they see me. Um, one, I know that the teacher was in the corner talking, uh, but they had a PowerPoint up and they could highlight, and you can see the teacher as they talked, they recorded their notes that they were taking, the highlights that they were making. So kids could sit there and watch that, whether it's on their own iPad or up on the screen, kids had that information, not only for when they're gone, but now if I'm home studying, I can pull that back up and go, what was she talking about when I recorded that uh, earlier in the day? So um, that's kind of a newer thing we've seen coming about. I think we'll see some growth in that area probably. And then athletics, we put a few things in. They're doing digital medical release cards instead of the card that we used to have to carry around all the time. Now they're doing some electronically, which allows them to do this profile for injury treatment. 
I had a kid who's got injured in basketball, and now they're out for swimming. I can kind of track some of that with Cassie's help down in the athletic trainer's office to kind of see, is that a recurring injury? Is it something I need to be aware about before swimming starts? Um, those kinds of things. Uh, then they're doing a lot of additional team handbooks. Again, cutting back on paper, cutting back on what the kids are training around. Um, I'll say for those seven that kind of stuff. Lots of times the iPad's not there because the teacher's gone. So we had to train teachers. They have to leave things that the subs can do with a computer or they have to have a student who knows that they're going to use their iPad because lots of times the teachers are taking those resources with them. So last year we had a lot of occurrences where the sub got there and they were like, oh, show this video on YouTube on the laptop. And they go, there's no laptop here. They took all the tools with them. So uh, we've had to make some changes in how teachers build those lessons for when they're gone, especially if they're using additional resources. So. We have a lot of students who will just jump up and go, here's how you do it, they plug it in and move on. Um, there are it. probably 25 to 30 fairly experts in how to handle that. And if they know what they're supposed to get to, the kids typically take help in because of that. Or it might be this, that the son <coughs> make an assignment on the backpack. So the instructions might be, have the kids go into the assignment. It's, it's the assignment dated 12 to today's reading. Have them complete that and turn it back in. So if someone doesn't need an iPad, and she just needs to tell the kids where to go find something, oftentimes, and, and we see that happens quite a bit. They normally just put it up in the back of the And the other question is, you talked about apps that cost. So I'm a teacher. I want a new app that costs five dollars. Who do I go to to get that? Typically, they have to go to James. A lot of some money. I have some money for apps this year. Uh, we gave them some money as well last year, but we really pushed them towards free stuff um, because if they go download a $10 app, we can't afford to buy it for every one of their kids. So we really pushed them in that direction. We have teachers that do. Um, so typically they have to go to their principal and say, hey, I want to get this. And um, that's typically a yes or no, like that's a pretty quick thing. And then they, if they get them from us, we have to buy those as a school district. Well, like the teacher said, she got it last year free. Now this year it's cost $2. James put enough money away uh, for each for academy. Every, every, every principal. For each content area. For each content area. Content area. Also, so, put money back for apps. So there is money available for that. Now, you know, we buy it for them, but they have to go through the principals and say, yeah, go ahead and use it. Yeah, it's very good point. This is worth a lot. Well, the other thing, you know, we, we bought an app for a teacher the other day that, you know, it was 10 bucks, And we said, you know, this is going to be a real struggle. You should be looking at this from your point of view, not every kid in your classroom having it, because that's going to add up real fast. And she said, I, I want it so I can use it to demo um, some things, or I can have a center where they can use my iPad. So they're thinking outside the box on those expensive apps. They're going, I can use this differently. I don't need every kid to have it. I can build lessons around one on this outing, or maybe I get two and, and make it work. So it's, you know, we've tried to help them understand that they don't, every kid doesn't necessarily need it. The periodic table is a prime example. We bought the chemistry teachers that they wanted it. I think we bought them and there's one that's like 10 or 15 bucks. It's very fancy, but not all the kids need that. It's great for demonstration, but when they're actually trying to do stuff with the periodic table, it's better to have the plain Jane one anyway. Um, so it's getting them to see that, that there's ways to use those apps as well. So a student can buy any app that they want as long as it's approved students, on the list? Or, I mean, we have apps that they're not allowed to have. As far as whether they want to buy or not, throw that to them. But what we're trying to really not do is have teachers go, everybody go get this $2 app. We don't want to be putting that pressure on kids who can't go get that $2 app. You know, when we think that's 99 cents, not a big deal, but it, it may be a big deal. So, um, and if I do it, and then all my other eight teachers do it, now I they have $8 to spend on apps. So, we try to get teachers, that's why we push them so much towards free stuff. But we haven't limited them to only free for them personally. Are you seeing any examples for teachers are experimenting with flipped classrooms? I know she looked in here at you like the general here where they record lessons. Are you seeing where they're recording lectures and, and kids are actually accessing those lectures at home and then come into class and teachers are facilitating with all the students coming in and providing their instruction? 
I haven't heard of anybody that's doing it more on that, that scale. Um, I, I've seen this. This is probably the closest we have to that that I've seen. I don't know. Chris Remick, our science teacher, teacher last from last year, year was very good at the flipped classroom, and we're sending a couple of teachers to a workshop in January, and that's one of the modules too. So I'm expecting that to catch on. Right. Um, We've demoed some of those for them. There's some things like that that I teach you. We had some trainings with all the teachers last year where we showed them. Here's some things you could be doing, it, you know, and trying to get them to see what that flipped classroom model kind of looks like. One was a distance class where it's completely flipped. Um, but it's, I don't know what the gentleman's problem, but it's it's one we just used as a sample. Everything's on i 10 2 Kids go and get that, and then they come to class ready to, to do the, the work side where the teacher's there versus the learning side, which is done outside. One thing we, you know, when we ask teachers those questions, like, well, you know, how do I videotape that? If we gave you a device that does that, what they did is it doesn't have to be that three shots that you see when you watch an MIT video on it Jude. Yeah, they got two or three cameras set up and they're high definition, they look great. Most of the ones we showed them are very, they're off the iPad, you know, or off the phone or something like that that the teacher has with them that they're just sitting at the desk recording the lecture, highlighting the notes, those kinds of things. They need to see that because I think they, they go and watch the ones that they're interested in, which are from Duke or Harvard or whatever, and those are very professional looking done uh, videos. So we had to show them some realistic things that high school teachers are doing on a regular basis. Some of that help. relevant activities at home, expanding the learning environment, making those meaningful activities for kids. I would tell you that kids are now going home and discovering things for themselves that they haven't ever before, I don't think, in the past. Now, it may not be a direct assignment, but I think they get an interest spark, and I do see it a lot when they come and talk about additional stuff that they have learned in context in relationships and so I think our learning is going past those walls and that that 320 class I come with yeah I think that happens a lot. I don't but I, I I don't think it's necessarily what you're referring to but I think there is some, some change happening with it. Well this just looks like a, a, a new way to, to make some positive changes in that direction. Um all the time. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Instead of Well, I 
think even if we're able to eventually expand down, you're going to see a change in that mentality as well. I mean, I, I know I harp on this probably a lot, but the Mayan program this summer was just incredible for the younger kids being able to get the technology in their hands and then being able to have conversations about the books that they were reading. Um, you know, and the diversity of the readings that they were able to make as well. And I think if we're able to get that started younger, of course, you know, this is my dream world where Bill Gates, you know, funds all of our iPads. <laughs> yes, I was trying to make a joke. Uh, but, um, you know, I think that's where we need to go. The younger kids know it, you know, and then they're even more prepared when they have the one-to-one -one at the high school level. I don't know if we'd ever be able to do a one-to-one -one that young or if we would even want to, but having that access at that age, even as a center or something like that, I think would be great. And you'll see that learning expand more. And I would like to know the name of that app for the two, please. Thank you. Thank you. Well, look at the rigor that we're adding at kindergarten level. There's no way for us to add as much rigor as 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 Common Core requires us to do without supplementing at home. I just don't see it happening, and I don't want to set our students and teachers up for failure. I do want our community, our students, and our education system to be ready to to support the rigor that we're asking of these kids, and they're going to have to supplement at home. Amen. Yep. But our job is to get those kids ready for college and career. Just in along with that, um, I thought that the presentation that we had um, at the kindergarten level with all of the things that parents could do with their children was was really kind of part of that and it was something that they'll build on as they go through the, the grades. I, so I, I think that's kind of already happened. What you saw the kindergarten, you're going to be seeing the first grade, second grade, third grade, all the way up. So that's just the beginning of what you see there. So those kids are going to come through and have a different skill set than what our other kids have had in the past. Do you agree with that, Leanne? I would agree with that. And Leanne pretty much takes the charge of that uh, to a certain point. I think. Uh, I didn't get that long ago, uh, dispensers of knowledge. I think our kids are questioning our teachers more now because they have that information right there in front of them. So not just depending on that teacher, but ask, actually questioning that teacher. What are you telling me? Is it just, and I see this in history classes and social studies classes happening more and more now where keep them on their toes because they have that access right there. They can get it. Yeah. And like Mary said, <coughs> And we're also seeing our teachers are able to do current events. You know, it's not the current <coughs> ran off last year and I haven't had time to do new ones, so we're just doing this one. But reading how it's relevant things that they're reading or seeing on TV or in the news now. Like if, if it's a reading assignment, we'll do something that's of interest right you now, currently, right now. Like it, so Katie's talked about that a number of times with how easy it is. So let's pull up this article and it's still the same English activity, but has some new things. That's a multi How's the, uh, the Wi-Fi infrastructure, the support infrastructure behind the iPads? Oh, the bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's, But you know, we I've been to a couple of board faculties at, at the middle schools and um, they talked about some of the computers having problems, internet problems, logging on, crashing. Not a lot, just here and there. So I was just kind of curious to how we're doing I on our the iPad is so much different that we don't see the problems you hear about with laptops because they're on right. all the time. Um, so those kinds of problems that, that you talk about aren't as big of an issue. Our Wi-Fi problems that we have at the high school, our student cause, they did something to cause their Wi-Fi problem. Um, so on their individual iPad, but not. No, not causing. Not they, building. Not causing on. problems. Just building wise, they're causing problems. So the problems we deal with Wi-Fi related are our student cause, um, which we deal with. On it all, almost every single day, kids come in going, I can't get on. Um, I think.
think we've been monitoring the proxy for quite some time. Well, we had we had issues early in the year during the entry, which is why we asked the question: What are kids doing during entry? Um, where it basically brought the internet perceivably to a standstill. Uh, we made some adjustments, and since that time, it's been um, considerable, uh, much much better. So I think I think we've addressed that issue um, that we had early on in the year. That was affecting the district wide, and we found the pattern because it was at one of ten every single day. When they went to the mentoring classes and we saw that spike every single day, it was kind of obvious where the problem was. So, but I think we haven't heard near as many concerns or problems that we would have early on. Um, other than that, I think overall that side of things we tried not to get into. We wanted to do more instructional today, but that side of things is running much better. I think we've handled that. Our, our problems are Apple related problems, not function and, and process related. So. Um, but those are pretty minimal as well. So overall, I think it's running quite smooth or from our point of view. I'll, I'll be a little uh, more unpredictable next time. <laughs> <laughs>